Hello, you're watching of New X, and today let's talk about a recently started airing Chinese contemporary drama by Se Chengbao, The White Castle. This is a 40 episode contemporary medical drama that's been airing on Hunan Satellite Television, also on Web Mango TV. Directed by Yang Wenjun, Shi Luan, Xie Lü, written by Zhang Lei. Mu Xing, based on an existing novel written by the author Wang Chenggang. This writer is a real doctor who is specialized in cardiac surgery. He's a doctor from Beijing University. He also get his postdoctoral from US Los Angeles. So this is a qualified professional proper doctor working today who also happens to be a writer and wrote a novel about doctor's life in China. It is led by Peng Guanyin, Tu Songyan, Gao Xing, Xiong Ziqi, also featuring Gai Yuexi, Shi Shi, and guest starring Chen Shu. It was shot from the end of June last year to the middle of December. I have already watched 21 episodes of this 40 episodes drama. To me, this is so far a between one and two gold mine drama. As usual, let me quickly introduce you to the story, then we're going to talk about what is worth watching and what may be a problem of this drama, in my opinion. Our perspective lead role is played by Peng Guanyin, named Wang Yangming, and he just graduated from his doctor's degree in medicine, which means he is already in his 30s, as in medical school, you have to go through that many years to get a doctor's degree, but he almost has no working experience. He comes from the Inner Mongolia province of China, and he now is is studying in the big city and if he couldn't get a job in a big hospital he would have to go back to his hometown finally he landed a position in the emergency room as an intern with another person played by Xiong Ziqi and they're competing for that one position. The hospital tells them that we're only gonna pick one. At the end of the whole trial period, we'll decide who gets kept. So we have this, let's say, overstudied in school guy who has very little experience, struggling to stay and not making mistakes. And he becomes the student of the much more experienced emergency room doctor played by Tu Songyan. Then the role played by Xiong Ziqi who is in competition with him, studies on under Gao Xing's role, who is also a very experienced emergency doctor. So we have these two guys who are in competition, but also they build up a friendship in this big hospital's emergency room. Now, let's get into the good and bad part of this drama. On the positive end, point number one, very quick point, contemporary drama, original voice, no dubbing, thank heavens. Number two, this is a point that definitely deserves this, which is it qualifies as a medical drama. It's not perfect in terms of showing you what doctors do on camera, sometimes just due to the practicality of you can't actually do CPR on a living, breathing, normal person, extras. But you can't just press them with the real force, you're gonna break their rips. So a lot of those things when it happens, it definitely doesn't look as real as say, if they have a lot of money and make a really convincing dummy. Apart from these little things, most of the practices are all done pretty authentically to how it happens in reality. And this comes from my mother, okay? So I believe her 100%. She's a cardiologist all her life. Although she's not in the surgical department, she does do sometimes surgeries, simple ones, such as installing pacemaker. I actually got recommended to watch this drama by my mom. I was chatting with her online and she told me she was watching the Mango television medical drama and she was up to episode 12 at that point. And she told me it's a pretty watchable drama. It passes my mother's censorship. That's definitely a positive point. The next point related to that is upon being professional enough, it also puts quite a lot of emphasis at the systematic problems that the medical practices in China right now has. If you're not from China and you're not working in this field, you probably are completely unaware of. But for all the professional doctors working today, they all know this. And my mom, although she's retired, she still is very closely involved with things that happens at her hospital. So she knows what's going on. And she's like, there are some things in this drama that are just so accurate and so reflecting. The troubles that the system has, such as, Doctors get trained for a long time until they get doctor's degree, which makes them close to 30 at least when they graduate. They have very little on-hand practices during that time. And often when they go to big hospitals, they have to start from the very bottom. And basically you have a very expensively trained person who's been in medical school for like 10 years and ended up working at such jobs that is just 
a waste almost of all the time and amount of money you've put in previously to make them get into that position. And then they get very little pay at the beginning of their career, so little and so much workload that it makes a lot of people who are actually really talented give up their career before their career can even start. I've seen it happening around people I know, my high school mates who are geniuses of study, who got into the best medical schools in China. China, but they have to go through so many years of spending money and not really working. And by the time they start to work, they have to start from the ridiculous level of bottom jobs that doesn't pay them well at all. And they're already in their 30s. And I know somebody like this, who is such a good student, who gave up medicine and became a uh, medical equipment company salesperson just because he wants the money, he needs the money. Being a doctor is not gonna give him that life. And in this drama, Peng Guanyin's role is something similar in that situation. He chose to go down the proper route of being a doctor, but it's so hard. You'll see in all details of his life how much workload and how not experienced he is due to the training structure. Basically, the system that's currently in place is not the most ideal way, let's say, of best utilizing this type of people's talent. And my mom complains about that a lot. When she was young, given that at that time there's hardly any university graduates in China, let alone masters or doctors, end of cultural revolution, and she was the first round of people who got into university, she went to study medicine she graduated as just an undergrad and went right into hospitals and get hands-on trainings. So she has, let's say, a much less degree than most of the later comers, like say a decade, two decades later, the newer doctors who came in their hospitals and working under them. By the time she is already obviously like the department head and something like that. But she's like, if you only look at diplomas, right? She has a much lower diploma than a lot of future doctors that came in. But when it comes to, you know, on hands things, the 20 years experience she has is worth so much more than getting just paper degrees. And she says the current situation in China is worse than when she was young, a lot worse. And she sees a lot of people purely because they can't survive on the wage and the workload and the delayed cashing in on their studying into the career. And it causes a big shortage of good doctors in China. And my mom also talks a lot about, because even when you get to a certain position in the hospital after decades, you still are not really paid that well at all in China, public hospitals, not private ones. And a lot of doctors, just to survive, they have to do things that are sometimes against the rules, such as taking flights, taking trains to other hospitals to do surgeries for smaller hospitals who don't have good doctors. And sometimes it's against the rules, but they need the money. They can't survive on their wage. They have kids, they have mortgage. And then there are also other situations that are more extreme than this and causing a lot of really good doctors in their 40s and close to 50s when they are at the prime of their sort of skills and everything. But because they've done so many wrong things in their history, because they need the money and they couldn't get it, they did it in certain things that are illegal and it got found out and then they get put into prison. I mean, recently there are a couple of really high profile good doctors who got <laughs> because of all kinds of conduct and they got incarcerated and then getting put into prison. And by law, yes, what they've done is wrong. There's bribery, there's all kinds of things going on in the hospital. But my mom calls that system which is because the system is not set up fairly to those hardworking, overworked and producing so much value for the society doctors, forcing the good woman to become a prostitute. That's the um, what that idiom means. It's the same situation happening in the medical practice in China, very rampant and widespread. I kind of always know that's going on, but my mother definitely knows much better about that. And because of this drama actually reflects some of that going on. You'll see that happening mostly to Tu Songyan and Gao Xing's role. How they deal with the whole money and work and what is the right thing to do, but then what is the thing that you have to do to survive? And this drama got my mom talking. So she said so much to me about what she observes and things that she feels is so not right with the system. That is very 
specific to China, so it wouldn't apply to every other country in the world. But for the professional doctors in China, when they watch this drama, they probably will feel very strong resonance. So that's a really great thing about this drama, being able to bring that to the screen. And probably you should thank the original author of the novel that the drama is based on for doing that, because he wrote it from his real experience. And then two more quick, not so important points, but things I appreciate. One is that this drama does have love line, romantic line, but they're not overemphasized and they're not cringy and they don't take too much screen time. The other thing is, this to me is the only drama so far that I've watched with Peng Guanyin as the male lead actor that I really enjoy in his performance and I can feel a connection to this character. You believe he's a real person, he's not pretentious, he's not trying to act, he's a really real person. Whereas his previous dramas, whether it's those confidence drama where he plays basically a psychopath or that doctor drama that happened not so long ago that I rented about because oh, it's just such a flat two-dimensional role. It gives you the feeling that they cast him just because he looks cool and aloof and tall. Compared to those roles he's done, in this drama he's so much more lovelier both as the character and also as the actor. I'm really happy that I've watched this drama. It definitely has changed my impression of Peng Guanyin for quite a bit on the positive end. And now when I look at his face, I wouldn't always just think of him as those not lovable and likable characters at all. I will finally have a picture of him as somebody that actually is quite adorable. These are quite a few number of very positive points about this drama. But then I didn't give it a perfect rating. Point number one, this is not a super high quality contemporary drama if we don't think about it as a medical drama, just as a general contemporary drama. It's production quality, it's refineness in its picture, in its design of things. It is what I call put a camera on the scene so that you see what's happening and it makes sense. But a Apart from that, not adding anything on top drama. In an ideal world, I'd like every drama to have a little bit of its clear style that makes it stand out a little bit from other things. This drama wouldn't be one of those. The second point is that there are many really good medical dramas in the world, okay? If you've watched any of them, uh, <laughs> this one probably is not in any way can be compared. I mean, if you just use like Good Doctor, House, and even ER, all those dramas, that exists in this world, this wouldn't really compare in its narrative quality, story writing quality. It also sometimes has a little bit too much forced tension, trying to make that moment super exciting and unusual and unseen for dramatic storytelling purposes, but it doesn't quite work logically in reality, such as late teen number episodes, there, there's gonna be a situation where you have a very unusual thing about a whole family. There are three people in the family and they simultaneously had some heart problems that needs immediate surgery. So they have to put three people in surgeries at the same time with four doctors monitoring different rooms and they have to help each other while it's all going on. It's like dramatically really exciting to watch. But my mom was telling me when she watched that whole thing, she's like, first is what are the chances of a the same family, three people having problem at the same time, which is in her decades of working, never met. And she works at a really big general hospital. And the next thing is, she says, even if you have to do surgeries on three of them, that person's condition and that person's condition and that person's condition are a different priority. You can totally do one first, do the next one, do that one last. And there's one person who can definitely get just medicine and get monitored for a while before they go into surgery. It's not urgent to the point you have to do three at the same time. That's just too much. I mean, that's my, you know, doctor mother start <laughs> talking from her professional angle. So basically this drama is on one hand, not the best narrative writing quality medical drama. On the other hand, they will try to make it more dramatic and sometimes try too hard. That makes it look a little bit funny to professional people, but it's still not mistake level. It's just unnecessary level. Also, it's not really negative point, but I just want to remind people this drama is focused on the four male doctors. Peng Guanyin, Xiong Ziqi, Gao Xing, Tu Zongyan. They play the two pairs of teacher and student. And they take 95% of screen time. If for some reason <laughs> you don't like any of them and you're not interested in their acting or their face or anything, this drama may just not be that interesting to you. Unless you're just like really curious about what is rather realistic working environment for Chinese doctors these days in China. Otherwise, 
it probably wouldn't be something that um, I highly recommend to everybody to check out. It's definitely not the type of drama that if you miss it, you're making a mistake. So that should conclude my halfway review on the drama by Se Chengbao, White Castle. Hope that's useful for you to decide whether you should check it out. Thank you for watching Avenue X. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.